Hey everybody, Michael Simon here. We are doing our little daily dinner, showing you how to use stuff in your pantry, how to substitute things so everybody gets a delicious meal on the table for their family and their friends or whoever they are holed up with right now. Uh, that's it, that's what we're doing. So today, mac and cheese, and I said cheese because this is a mac and cheese without dairy. We got tons of requests for uh, vegan, dairy-free, all these things, because a lot of people are on different diets or can't eat certain things. Um, myself included, dairy is rough for me. I, uh, I have autoimmune, so dairy is one of my triggers, so I always try not to eat dairy, so this is a fun little trick for mac and cheese. First thing that we have is we have one head of cauliflower, and I just cut it all up. As you can see, the cores in there, everything. And you're just gonna get these in relatively small pieces. Um, a lot of times, you'll see when people do a puree of cauliflower, they will just boil it and then puree it, which is fine, but you don't get quite as much flavor. I like to uh, give it a little time in the pan with some oil first to get a little bit of caramelization in there. And then also then when you do add your liquid to boil it, it doesn't make the whole house smell like bad gas, which sometimes cauliflower and cabbage will do. As I'm putting this in this little bowl, uh, I'm gonna tell you. So two things, I have my boiling water going for the pasta to cook. I have my pan on medium high heat. But the, the things that go on here before we start filming every day are kind of hilarious, I think because the whole world obviously is on the internet right now. We shut down everything except Liv's phone. Everybody turns their phone off, computers off, tea, everything's off. So that way we try to get as good a streaming as we can um, to you guys. We don't know if it's working, but we're still trying really hard. <laughs> we don't know if it affects things at all. So I have my cauliflower cut up. I'm gonna put a, a decent amount, I'm, I'm using olive oil today, a decent, but any oil will work. If you're not worried about dairy, you could use butter here. One of the big things when we put up the recipe yesterday, one of the big questions is like, what if I like cheese? What if I like dairy? Then you use cheese and dairy. We're all good. So I'm doing cauliflower because when we puree this, it's gonna look like a white creamy sauce. Couple tricks if you have kids that like the mac and cheese to be slightly orange. You could add a touch of pumpkin puree to this. You could put some carrots in the mix. You could put some sweet potatoes in the mix. And then when you puree it, you'll get that nice little orange tinge that we all grew up with and love. Well, at least most of us did, especially if we weren't lucky enough to grow up in the South where mac and cheese is king. So in goes our cauliflower. And I'm also gonna put a nice pinch of salt in with that. And I think it needs just a touch more oil um, by the look of things. I think in the recipe I've had, I called for about a quarter cup, which seems like a lot of oil, but it's almost like you're frying this a little bit to get that caramelization. As that is done, I'm gonna start cutting up an onion. So it calls for one cup of onion. This is a question a lot of people are asking. They're like, what's a, a one onion? Sometimes you say an onion, sometimes you say a cup, sometimes you say a half a cup. Basically, for a medium to large onion. For the most part, a whole onion is a cup, a half an onion is a half a cup. So when you're thinking about recipes, if it says an onion, just use an onion, if it says, you know, a cup, that's essentially one whole onion. So you could slice or dice the onions. Remember, we're going to puree these up. So you just wanna cut them thin so they cook quick, but the shape that you choose to cut them in does not matter if you do not have fresh onions, but you want the onion flavor in there, you could just use a little onion powder without much problem. Do we have questions, Liv? Yes, Juana Maria is asking if you could use leeks instead of a regular onion. You could use any onion that you could find. You could use leeks, you could use scallions, you could use shallots, you could use red onion, you could use white onion, you could use yellow onion. I probably meant a pearl onion. Any onion you could get your hands on, you could certainly put in this. A red onion will obviously change the color, but the taste will be the same. If you can't find fresh onions at all, as I said, onion powder works just fine. I also have two cloves of garlic here. I'm just gonna give those a smash and add those to the mixture. And again, if you can't find fresh garlic at your store or you don't have any in your house, 
You could sub garlic powder or garlic, garlic salt here. No fault in there. No one's judging you. A lot of people ask when they are picking a powder or using a powder instead of the like onion or the garlic. What, how does that translate measurement wise? You know, I would say <clears throat> a tablespoon of fresh garlic is about a teaspoon of garlic powder, roughly. Um, that's a, just, I think, a good way to start it. So about a tablespoon to a teaspoon. Um, onion powder, a little more. I'd say a half a half a cup of onion is about a teaspoon of garlic powder or onion powder. But you just want to do that to taste. So in goes our garlic. I'm going to give this a stir. It's starting to break down a little bit, but I want some color. Once I start to get some color in here, then I'm going to add my liquid. I'm just going to do it with water today, guys. If you have veg stock, you can use veg stock. If you are not a vegetarian, you can use chicken stock, veal stock, beef broth, whatever you have works very good in here. I wouldn't go wine or beer in this situation, but if you want, you can. Obviously, beer and cheese go good together. So as this is caramelizing, I have water boiling here. I'm gonna salt my water. Where did I put my salt? Oh, I'm here. I'm gonna salt my water. I'm using kosher salt here. A lot of people ask about salt. I cook with kosher, I finish with sea. That's how I work it. If you only have iodized salt at home, you could use iodized salt too. I just use kosher and sea salt. This is one box of pasta. Any noodle that you have at home will work. A heartier noodle like this, a fusilli or a rigatoni or a penne or, or a ketti, um, those kind of noodles will work better in a mac, elbow obviously will work better in a mac and cheese situation. Um, but if you only have like uh, fettuccine, spaghetti, something like that, then we're just going to call it Alfredo. So don't worry about it. No panics there. All right. A couple people are asking if they were using frozen cauliflower, frozen onions, what would, how does that change the beginning? If you have frozen vegetables, nothing changes. You're going to get your pan hot. You're going to get your oil hot. You're going to add your vegetables. You're going to let them caramelize. Nothing stays the same. Another question that I saw a lot today on, uh, social when we put up the recipe is what if they have cauliflower rice that was frozen and pre-bought same thing we're doing it the exact same way nothing changes um again i'm doing this with cauliflower because i want the sauce to be white you could do this with butternut squash and then it's strain orange you could do this uh with carrots you can do this with pumpkin puree there's a lot of different options um, on how you could get the sauce but i'm looking for this nice white sauce here. Also, if, if when you're baking this, if you want to make a little extra and have it stashed, it's a nice thing too to add to soups. If you want a creamy consistency in soup and you can't have dairy, say you're making a creamy mushroom soup but you can't put in cream, you could fold some of this cauliflower puree in and it's going to give you a little bit of a creamy consistency, um, which works really nice. So you could make a bunch, freeze a little, and then when you make a soup that you want to be creamy but you can't have cream, you could add that. What else we got, Liz? Um, Mark is, is asking, what are your thoughts on adding chorizo or another meat to this? Any meat that you want to add, you could add. Um, I wouldn't do them in the puree. Um, I'll show you when I would add the meat. After we puree this into our sauce, we're then going to mix it in with the pasta. If I was adding chorizo, salami, roast chicken, any meat that is already cooked, we would fold that in with the sauce before we baked it. Um, um, we have another fan oil. asking, sorry, olive oil versus vegetable oil. Any oil you have in house. I okay. like to cook with olive oil. It's what I currently have. If I only had vegetable oil today, I'd be cooking with vegetable oil. Yesterday I cooked with grapeseed oil, whatever oil you have. See how we're getting some color there, Liv? Mm -hmm. That's what we're looking for. Just a little bit of caramelization, not too much because we want this to stay light. And then I'm gonna go about two cups of water. And we're just going to let this simmer until the vegetables get tender and then we're going to puree it in our blender. Now, as this is happening, we're going to make our faux Parmesan cheese. Now, I got to tell you, I thought this was, I can't say it on here, but curse, when Liz started making this, I'm like, what a bunch of, you know, fake Parmesan. Are you kidding me? And then I realized that dairy beats me up a little bit. I'm like, how do you make that fake Parmesan? And this is a great trick. It is <clears throat> cashews, 
nutritional yeast and a little bit of garlic powder. And we're going to blend it up. I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. But you can use this on, um, you can use this on top. Still got the slippers. Lift. Yep, Still we have people asking, so glad we got to that. <laughs> um, this little cheese substitute, um, it's great on popcorn. It's great sprinkled over vegetables. There's so many different uses for it. It just has a lot of flavor to it. Um, is it cheese? Does it taste exactly like Parmesan? No. But does it give you kind of that salty blast of that par only Parmesan could give? It does give you that a little bit. So I'm going with a cup of cashews, and I'm making enough of this so I have extra. One cup of cashews, a quarter cup of nutritional yeast. One of the biggest questions, we get, now nutritional yeast is pretty awesome stuff because like I said, popcorn, vegetables, um, and people that are saying, I can't, I, I, I'm not allowed to have salt. I'm, I'm trying to cut salt out of my diet. <clears throat> How can I cut salt out of my diet? This is a great thing to add if you can't have salt. Like if, if you like to salt your popcorn or sprinkle kosher salt on your vegetables and things like that when they're done, but you aren't allowed to have salt in your diet anymore or you're trying to reduce the salt in your diet, nutritional yeast is a great trick for that. So this all goes in our food processor. And then I'm just going to buzz it up so it has the consistency of grated cheese. Um, Katie's asking, is nutritional yeast the same as brewer's yeast? Look at that. Oh, there See? you go. No, you just go to the store. Look, you look right for it. It'll say nutritional yeast right on the bag. We're not baking with this yeast. We're not, like, making bread with this yeast. So this is what you want to look for. You want it labeled nutritional yeast. Now over here, this is going to be my topping for my mac and cheese before I bake it. So <clears throat> I have a cup or so of panko breadcrumbs. I'm going to add a little bit of our full Parmesan in with it. We're going to mix these two together. And also to that, I'm going to add a little bit. I had some flat leaf parsley. Flat leaf parsley would be good here. Rosemary, chives, thyme, um, if you have any herbs. If you don't have herbs, not a big deal. Also, if you made that herb puree that I showed you a couple days ago and you have some of that in your fridge, you could fold that into the topping also. A lot of people are asking if they have to go to a special store to buy the nutritional yeast or is it at any grocery store? I've never not seen it at a grocery store. Cool. At, no matter where I am, no matter what city I've been in, all my travels, I've never not seen it at a grocery store. So these get mixed together, and this is our topping. If you want your topping to be a little fattier, so to speak, you could add some oil, olive oil to this too, just to kind of bring it together a little bit. All right, so our puree, vegetables are looking tender. Let me just take a taste to make sure that they're tender. And if you, if too much liquid is reduced and the vegetables aren't tender, just add a little more liquid, don't panic. And when you're cooking your pasta, you wanna cook it about two or three minutes less than the directions on the box, because we're gonna bake it. Remember, it's gonna to continue to cook when it's baking. These are just about there. I'm gonna add just a touch more water, the smallest amount more water because I had this ripping pretty hard at a boil, so no need to panic, just a little more liquid, and you're good. What do we got question-wise, Liv? A lot of people are asking if they could replace the cashews with something else. Any nut you have, you can use. And what if, if they have a nut? If you have a nut allergy, just go straight breadcrumbs and nutritional yeast. Not a big deal. It's still going to be delightful. Um, and a couple people were asking if this was in your, they remember it from your cookbook, but couldn't remember your cookbook name. The cookbook, um, the cookbook mac and cheese that we did, Fix It With Food, um, I made a dairy-free mac and cheese. I didn't do it with cauliflower. I actually, I used oat milk. Um, <clears throat> you know, oat milk, you could use almond milk, you could use all those different nut milks. I haven't seen any oat milk at the grocery store. Um, I, I'm trying not to go, I'm only going like once a week. Maybe they're, it's in your grocery store, but you could certainly use that also. Um, but there was a lot of cauliflower. So <laughs> this is the version we're doing. 
just breaking this up so it's ready to puree. And how long does the parm mix last? This will last in your fridge for six months. I mean, it has an incredible shelf life. So don't be afraid to make too much. I'm telling you, once you try it, um, once you try the mixture of the nuts and the nutritional yeast and the garlic salt, you'll start sprinkling it oddly enough on everything. Popcorn's one of my favorite things. But I even, the other, one day I, I roasted fish and I sprinkled some across the roasted fish. Made sure none of my carnivore friends saw me doing it. <laughs> so I didn't get mocked by some of my chef friends. But let me tell you, it was great over a piece of roasted salmon. And, and there's a lot of um, nutritional benefits to, to the yeast. So... It's good in that way, too. Mary Beth was asking if you thought that the topping would be good for eggplant parm as well. Yes, great eggplant parm. I actually did um, an eggplant parm like this back in the day on the chew with, uh, with that topping, and it was fantastic. Um, another question that I saw earlier is... Um, there were some people with celiac, and they said, I can't have breadcrumbs. What can I substitute for breadcrumbs? Um, you know, you could cook quinoa and kind of toast it, and that would work for a breadcrumb. Um, you could cook a rice and like al dente, pulverize it up, and you could toast that for a breadcrumb. Or you could buy gluten-free breadcrumbs, obviously. Um, but there are options there. Okay. Bonnie is asking, what's your opinion on mac and cheese made completely in the, on the stovetop versus mac and cheese finished in the oven? Um, I, I, I'm not one way or the other. I, I, the, the stovetop version, I think you have more control over. Um, sometimes the oven versions, to me, uh, they overcook a little bit and they get a little goopy. Um, so I'm not adverse to either. I think you got to undercook your pasta properly to make the oven one work but if you really like that crust you can't really accomplish you could sprinkle stuff on top but you can't accomplish that crust without filling the oven so here's our mixture it's going to get loud for a second so please excuse we got to puree this till it is smooth you could do this in a blender in a food processor if you're doing it in a food processor um you're going to have to it's not going to get quite as smooth i would recommend doing it in a blender so try to puree things on live TV because it gets noisy, but good results. All right, so this, our sauce, okay, is going to go back in the pan. I'm going to check it. Look at, see how it looks? It looks like a cream sauce, you see? Mm, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So now we just got to give this a taste. Yeah. I'm going to add nutmeg to it, and we'll make sure we have enough salt and pepper. Oh God, it's so good. It is so good. Here's the other great thing about this, guys. If your kids, if you're trying to get your kids to eat more vegetables, if you're trying to get your kids to eat more vegetables, one of the greatest tricks in the world. You know, you're telling them you're making them mac and cheese. They're happy as a clam. They don't even know they just ate a whole head of cauliflower. So this is really a good trick. Nutmeg. I'm gonna put in another little pinch of salt. I'm gonna put in some pepper. Catherine is asking, would this also be the start of cauliflower soup? Yes, this would make a beautiful cauliflower soup. And you could see because of the consistency of this, how nice it would be cream-wise to, you know, make another soup feel creamy. So it's, but cauliflower soup, you just thin it out a little bit and you have beautiful cauliflower soup. All right, so now we're gonna take our pasta, which should be cooked perfectly. It's cooked perfectly. Let's 
gonna go into our sauce. And again, whatever you have is fine. And I'm sure you could see at home, if you had a, like a long spaghetti Alfredo, the noodles of that, that um, you could pass this off as an Alfredo too. A lot of people are noticing you're not wearing an apron today. Really? Yes. Wow. It's because I have an unzipped hoodie on it, it's, I, so I opted for no apron. April will be back tomorrow. I like, <laughs> I like an apron. I feel the apron is very thin. <laughs> <laughs> very flattering yeah, on I, camera. I feel it hides my little, my little um, belly. <laughs> so we're going to mix this with the sauce. I held a little bit of my sauce back in the blender. Um, if I need more, I have more. And also, if I have a little extra... I'm gonna save it and freeze it. I need a little bit more. So I'm using the whole kit caboodle. So if you want extra, just do an extra head of cauliflower, an extra onion, whatever, and then you'll have it. So this goes in. Now you could certainly bake it right in here. I'm gonna get a little, we're gonna make a nice presentation today because why not? Oh gosh, it's so heavy. These things used to be light when I was younger. I'm going to spread that in there. It's ready to eat right now. If you, going back to the old question, what do you think about baking or nose baking? But this is to me just a fun little topping. I'm going to put that mixture of the panko, the faux parm, a little bit of parsley on top. We're going to blast this in the oven to get a little color and then it's ready to go. So I have my oven really high at like 500 degrees and I just shifted it to broil. I'm gonna put it underneath there and keep an eye on it because don't let any chef kid you. I have burned more stuff under the broiler and stoves and so has every other chef. So if it happens to you at home, don't panic. It happens to all of us. I can't tell you, Liz could tell you how many garlic breads I have just annihilated, incinerated <laughs> in the oven um, that I try to do last minute. A lot of people are asking about Norman, of course. Oh, Norman's taking a little snooze today. He was just, uh, he was very busy during the day today. He's, uh, as a puppy, he keeps himself very busy. He, we gave him a, um, I don't think I told the story the other day, we gave him a bully stick the other day and he chewed it for a little bit. Then he took the bully stick outside then Liz was watching him and he dug a hole, dropped the bully in, moved the soil over with his nose to cover it up, and then looked up and saw Liz watching him, dug it back up, grabbed the bully stick, and moved it to a place that she couldn't see. So he's a very busy five-month-old puppy, so there was a lot of that going on in the yard today and he just ran out of gas. I'm sure he's going to be full of it in about an hour again, so... Mm. Oh, yes. I mean, come on. Yeah. So here's the great thing about this. If you are trying not to have dairy, can't have dairy, whatever, want to get more vegetables into your diet, your family's diet, your kid's diet, don't even tell them it's a cauliflower mac and cheese with fake Parmesan. Just put it on the table, say mac and cheese. They are gonna love it. I promise you, they are gonna love it. So, I'm gonna take a little bit. I mean, Liv, you should get a shot of that. I That's know. That's beauty right there, right? I know. Okay. Funny I had two phones. I know. <laughs> if only we did have the production crew that some people <laughs> thought we had. Okay, good luck. I'm gonna scoop it out. Oh my God. It's incredibly creamy. It has that great crust on top. And if you wanted to add cheese to this, if you weren't dairy free, you could add cheese. You could put cheese on the crust. You could grate a little bit of white cheddar or so forth into the sauce um, at the very end, and you could still get all the veg in there. So you could add cheese to it if you want cheese, but it doesn't need it. That looks so hot. We're hot. <laughs> You can see the steam coming off of it all in the can. <laughs> oh, it's hot, but I can't stop eating it anyhow. 
It's got great texture. It's incredibly creamy. It gets that great Parmesan kind of thing going on. Even if you wanted to put some of the Parmesan mixture in the sauce when you mix it, you could do that too if you want to amp that up. I think it has enough just how it is, but this is going to be a game changer for you at home. I'm telling you, you're going to get your kids to eat more vegetables. It's delicious. It's like as healthy as mac and cheese could possibly be. Um, I'm in love with this dish. A couple of people are asking what would be the best way to reheat this if they end up having extra. To reheat it, just put it in a uh, in the oven. We don't uh, look. I went through this a lot about social media. I don't own a microwave. You can microwave no problem. It'll reheat. I didn't grow up with a microwave, Liz, and I've never had microwaves. We just don't have them. Um, but I would just put it in an oven and heat it right up. That's it. No problem. Um, cover it with foil. Warm it up. So. You could get this recipe, obviously, on the Food Network Kitchen Facebook page. Um, you could get it on my Instagram, at Chef Simon, with a Y. Also on my Facebook page, which is at Chef Simon, with a Y. Um, and then oh at, Liz, don't laugh at me, with a Y. I feel this is my Just Jack moment, with a Y. Okay. Um, no? Okay, forget it. Um, and then if you want more awesome recipes... You could go to the Food Network Kitchen app. There's thousands up on there for myself and other chefs on Food Network. We're going to continue to put tomorrow's recipe up a little bit, like about an hour. In an hour, tomorrow's recipe will be up on my Instagram page. We are also adding um, a substitution cheat sheet, which will make it easier for you guys to cook with. So you'll be able to say, like, I don't have this. Oh, I could use this to get you through every recipe. We are gonna post um, the menu for the next 10 days um, tonight on that also. And we're gonna get the, continue to get those recipes up. We'll cont continue to cook for another 11 days. I will see you guys soon. Have a wonderful day. Peace, love. See ya.